What does an experienced franchise CEO have to say about growing your business? Today, we find out with Mark Amory. Welcome to Start With A Win, where we unpack franchising, leadership, and business growth. Let's go. And coming to you from Start With A Win headquarters at Area 15 Ventures, it's Adam Contos with Start With A Win. Today, we have a remarkable guest with us, Mark Amory. A true Vancouver boy hailing from the beautiful West Coast of British Columbia is a devoted husband and proud father of five girls. I have two girls. I don't know how he does it. He has an impressive 15-year career in the franchise industry. Mark's entrepreneurial journey includes founding and leading several successful companies, not just one. Things such as Gorilla Property Services, Toodaloo Pest Control, Eeny, meeny, miny, mo landscaping and puddle pool services. Those are some pretty catchy names. Mark's expertise in franchising and his strategic vision have allowed him to exit Gorilla and Eeny, meeny to focus on propelling puddle pool services to new heights in both Canada and the U.S. Stay tuned as Mark shares his valuable insights and experiences in the world of business and franchise growth on today's episode. Mark, welcome to Start With a Win. Great. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me. You bet. Hey, take us through a little bit of your background in franchising. This is fascinating because, I mean, you've been in franchising 15 years and yeah. the the litany of brands you've been with, you know, Gorilla Property Services, Toodaloo Pest Control, Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo, which Mo is in landscaping. Yeah. Mowing, That's it. And yeah. Puddle Pool Services. First of all, did you come up with these names? Because these are pretty catchy. And tell I us- did. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Take us through your franchising history. Sure. Yeah. So I started. I've always been in the service industry and and um, took a, a real liking to franchising. Just the model being able to grow. You couldn't organically grow that quick. You know, you just wouldn't happen, right? So the franchise model really, um, really did it for me. I really, uh, really appreciated that space. So I got into it. Um, I I had a pest control company, not franchise based. It was just. Uh, service based and uh, sold that exited and really got into the franchise and started Gorilla. Um, and that was built more owner operator model, right? Which was, uh, and that was my first go and it went great. It went, uh, we got it up to in f- five years, there was close to 50 units, right? So 50 territories only in Canada. And it was, um, it was fun. It was great. And, and yeah, so I started, I found it from, uh, you know, I always call it zero to hero, just from scratch, the name, the number, you know, the first one, hiring the first tech and yada, yada, right up to 50 territories. So 50 locations. And that was great. And um, moved on to to Lou Pest Control at the same time. Moved into that space, again, franchise as well. Um, and then into the landscape space. It, it's all kind of this, I would say it's same, same, but different. Like service is service, right? There's all, it's this, the trucks do usually the same equivalent for, for revenue and um, the model's the same, um, but I really, really wanted to go. Being from Canada, was uh, take it to the U.S. And I learned with uh, my first brand there that uh, that model really, like to be honest, it really didn't work in the U.S. Didn't um, that owner operator model is it's chuck and truck. It's it's challenging, right? I hate saying chuck and truck, but you know what I mean. It's it right. is it, it it can be challenging, right? So um, the puddle <clears throat> puddle was designed from day one to um, grow as an executive model or a semi absentee model which has allowed us to skip, like we have just blown through the roof. The first year we have 17 new territories year one, right? So that's wow. a record. I think it's a record. It's got a record somewhere, right? So, it's, so are, uh, you, are, you, are you doing a region developer where somebody opens franchises or sells franchises in their territory or do they buy a region and they open multiple servicing components in their, in no, their territory? No, so as far as... Like um, puddle will stay with puddles puddle, right? The others are, right. are separate. It's so each one of those are there's 17 individual operators. Okay. Running the territories, you know, for, across Canada and now into the U.S. and California, Nevada, and Florida. So uh, we just started the push there about three months ago. It take in Canada. It takes about a year to get all the documents, everything switch over Canadian to U.S. Right. US friendly, right. So it's um, yeah. So we've been able to open 17 locations year one for puddle and. Um, planning on hitting 50 in the next year. That's awesome. Take me through the business model of Puddle. You talked about an executive model. You know, we've got owner operator and then we have executive model of franchising where you are supervising people. You're not out there or maybe you are, I don't know, cleaning the pool or doing what have you. Take us through that business model. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And I think it's, 
like every in franchising, I think it's, you know, it's either owner operator or exec model or semi absentee, right? You're either on the tools or not on the tools, right? Right. Um, I think what differs puddle is it's more of a hybrid. It's we, we base it on, um, you know, whenever you're first from startup to launch is part of the process is hiring and employees, technicians. It's very, I'd say that's probably 20% is the actual pool cleaning in that that world. The other 80% is business development, growth, marketing, um, you know, KB, all of those items that really structure the business. So it's more of a, you're buying a business that, that is allowed to um, ramp up revenue. But again, I think it's more off the tool. So that would be the difference uh, with Puddle compared to the, the competitors where they're not really, and I say it's, I say it's hybrid because everybody, once they go through train, they all want to be I want to go in the truck for the first three, four months because it's a nice day. The guys are in flip flops or in, te- you know what I mean? And there's nobody that's ever pissed off around a pool. Everybody's happy. Right. So it, <laughs> it makes a really nice life, but it's not a, we try to veer away from that lifestyle model. It's more of the, the business model, which allows to, you know, and none of our, of our owners have any pool experience. They all have, you know, business experience, admin growth, team building that along those lines. So that's awesome. Everybody likes the pool person, you know, it, it's, they're, yeah. They're like the lifeguard or whatever. I mean, they yeah. show up with their little, their scooper net and their chemicals yeah, yeah, and their yeah. cleaner. You're like, Everyone Hey, welcome. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They should yeah, bring beer. Yeah. They bring beers with them or something like that. They I don't do. Know. You know, that's no, it's, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I'm sure the Friday afternoon calls, but yeah, it's, it's very, uh, it's a nice lifestyle. So it's, we try to really, um, even whenever we do have a lot of our owners want to go in the truck the you know, first three months to really get their hands on, you know, that's great. They can do that, but make sure they're, they're working on the business and not in it. So let's um, talk about that. Let's, yeah. let's talk about working on the business instead of in the business, because it's always easier yeah. to work in the business because you know, you're sure. out there doing it. You feel the sense of accomplishment during the day. I cleaned, you know, five pools today or whatever it might sure. be, or let's say you, you're a painter. Oh, I, I got, you know, my painting job done this week. Yep. And you you go you check the box, but working on the business means you have to generate business. You have to be part of the community. You have to manage yes. the people in it and lead them. Um, yep. Take me through how do you get people to make that transition to become the business operator instead of the you know the person on the tools as you were talking about it. For sure, yeah, and that's a, that's a good question. A great point is how do you find that person or how do you find that niche? It's, I think from the franchisor side is you have to be very structured and very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Disciplined. You can't, um, you know, I learned back in my early days too. You can't just award a franchise because somebody has a, a dollar. You know what I mean? It's you got these are awarded. They're not. They're not purchased. So. I think from day one, finding that right person, and you know through the through the onboarding process or through the initial, if they're really looking to, if they want to keep their day job, you know, and they always think that's a problem, that's actually a, a stronger point for on our side because we know they're going to be they're not going to be diving into the tools. The problem, the, the problem, the pain point with owner operator model, I think, anyways, is you max out. You can only do a certain dollar figure, right? You have it's it's almost like a glorified mom and pop. Right. You have the one, you have the next technician and then three and they're managing, you know, managing two or three, but they're still in the game. They don't have the time. They don't have that 30, 40 hour work week to actually work on the business. So with our model, it's very, very support driven. Like we have weekly GSNRs, which is a goal set and review where it's an hour each week where we meet with the, with the franchise partner and they're set with their, they're um, tied in with their coach where they're setting points of accomplishments for the week following. And they're setting these like next week, I want to onboard, you know, five commercial accounts. I want to talk to seven property managers. I want to, you know, do whatever we we have have 20, 30 points of marking that we hit. We use those. So there where it allows us to get to our end game. If they would say year one, I want to do 300 K great. Allows us, you know, 52 weekly touch points to make sure we're getting there. And that's what really, really, um, really, I think the the franchise partner appreciates that. I know that for sure. As as far as the executive model mindset, appreciates that um, a little more than the owner operator. You're not taking time away from their day because I got to get things done, right? It's more how do I drive business? How do I drive revenue to my team to grow my team? So and you scale a lot quicker that way too. Totally. So uh, t- yeah. what what do you call that accountability program again? Uh, we call it a GSNR, just a goal set and review goal set and review. And that's a weekly review that you guys do with your franchisees. We do a weekly. Yeah. And then we do it. Uh, we call it the huddle, right? That on our, okay. on the internal, it's a gist. So it's a weekly huddle where we're meeting with them once a week. That would be you and I, Adam, let's get what is shaken and what, what are we doing this week? What, 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 and you, you actually run that. 
And you say, okay. you know what, I've, here's my goals from last week. We go through them. Okay, how did you, how did that work? Well, I wanted to do, I wanted to meet with three property managers. Okay, how did that work? I met with five. Boom. So we have another chart that takes the, um, it will analyze how that is performing. You say, great. So that's an above and beyond, right? The next one, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to um, make sure the team was meeting with 15 homeowners each. Great. How did that work? Well, they only met with three, four. Okay, let's talk about that. Why was that? Well, I don't think they had enough training or you know what? They didn't have enough time or whatever that pain point is. Then we work on that pain point, make sure it's all, all hunky dory and then we move on. Right. And then the third would be, you know, I want to, there's always a, a goal and then we have to fit a, a number like a dollar figure or an X, you know, I want to do, I want this truck to do, you know, 2000 revenue this week, whatever it is, 5,000. How did it do? We killed it. We made 10 or we did zero. Like why? So it allows these to work through all those pain points. What it's doing is actually creating this marketing world for that franchise partner in that territory saying, because, because not everything works. Like the, we take an older community, maybe they don't use social, like their TikTok, their LinkedIn, but maybe not, right? Maybe, but maybe not. So that world is going to be a little different than, you know, somewhere, you know what I mean? Somewhere that, that would use that thing. So even like the, right. the social world. Yeah. Well, this, this is, <laughs> I, I think this is a really valuable point here though, because most small businesses fail because they, don't get customers. Okay. I mean, it's, if, if you're out getting customers, you will likely start expanding your business. Yes. And it's, it's not about the customers you've had. It's about the customers. I mean, two of them, two things here, first of all, repeat customers, referral customers, you know, so those kind of go together, yeah. repeat and referral, because they all come from the repeat customers. And then the Got third it, one is that organic growth. And I love this GSNR because this drives organic growth, which feeds the repeat and referral business. That's so, yep. I mean, this is uh, folks listening. This is how you scale your business. I don't care if you're in real estate or if you're cleaning pools. I mean, it's yep. business is business is business. And this is the, the framework that Mark is talking about here that helps build your business. Now, let me ask you this. You really took me through a very, um, uh, it was a very conversational form of accountability. And and that's really what franchisees and small business owners need the most, but want the least a lot of times. You know, they get defensive or they just, they avoid it, something like that. But yes. you specifically laid it out and it was, sim it was, I mean, I didn't feel threatened or overwhelmed by it. Uh, you're like, okay, what were your goals? How did that go? Um, yeah. How did you establish that process? And where, what have you seen come from that when it comes to growth? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a really, really good area. How do we go from, and that's where the, uh, I found anyways, in, in my experience, it's, it's hard with the owner operator model. It's just that mindset is, and there's nothing wrong with the owner operator model. It's just um, certain fields. It's just different, right? It's, um, I think how, do, sorry, what was the question and how do we. So you, you, you established this kind of soft accountability. Yes. So you're, and, and accountability can cause conflict or it can cause growth. Yep. Okay. So, I mean, yes. you, you pushed it towards growth very, very well. And right. I mean, is, do you guys do this? Is this all in person or is this accountability something that they record their data and, and upload it or how does that work? Yeah, it's um, with ours, you know, I don't want to give away too much, right. Or I'd have to kill you, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, as far as ours is, we use a lot of working documents where it's, um, it's, you know, it's your Google share, you can use whatever you right. like, but it's, it's a live document. And as they're updating, it, it's whenever we talk about accountability, it's, you're right. It, it can go either way. There's a line there and you don't want to, it's, we don't want to make it like, we're the boss. Why are you doing this? And what, here's right. what you have. We don't want to make a list. Right. And I learned very early. We never use that word list, right? It's a, you know, this is success panel. It's a working, whatever you want to use, but um, you're actually like, Adam, you would be creating that list, right? Because at the end of it, you're going, you know what? I re and it's, I'm really having a problem with, um, I really want to grow the Instagram portion or the TikTok, but I'm really, I just, you know what? It's not my space or whatever. And you would be trained in these initially. You'd say, okay, great. Let's bring in Stephanie or let's bring in Paige or from our, in, uh, like our in-house in support. We have our social team, marketing team. They would become part of that call. So the calls are all done through Zoom or Google. It's, it's like this. There's never, it's very personal. We have a lot of locals too. They'll meet at the local Starbucks every Friday morning at seven. Some of them like that, right? So um, the franchisor's job is to make sure the franchisee is happy. I learned that day one. It's, totally. I work, I work for you. This is, I am, I'm here to support you. 
our teams that we have, if even it's something in the field, right? Uh, you know, the guys are really having problems. This great. Let's get one of the field ops guys to come on that call, work out the kinks. It's so you're happy. So you're actually creating that list. And then at the end of the call, we say, okay, what are, um, what are your goals next week? What, what do you want to do? You say, I'd really like to work on this, this, this. Perfect. Great. You work them out. And then that gives you that week to work. And as the business owner, and that takes you out of that owner operator model, right? That executive model where you have more of the, uh, my time's uh, more valuable out of the field than in it because you're, you're driving this monster, right? You're really, really um, fueling the fire. So, but you're right. There is a fine line there where you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be offensive at the same time you want. It's just support, man. That's, that's all it is. It's just, I'm here for you. And if you got to make time for that, right? That's why they joined the family. That's why they signed on. They need help with either support or marketing, whatever, whatever it is. So totally. Have you, are you familiar with Stephen R. Covey's the four disciplines of execution? I don't think so. I may. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, so, yeah. so you, you got to look this up. I mean, the, the, okay. the book, the four disciplines of execution, um, discipline three is keep a compelling scoreboard. Okay. And, yeah. and it's interesting because the person who has to put the, the points on the board is the one who establishes the scoreboard. And it sounds like, I mean, this is exactly what you guys are doing and it's fantastic. It's, right it's tested and proven as being a way, you know, if you want employees to accomplish a goal, you don't give them that goal. You ask them what goal they want to accomplish and then you yes. help them get there. And I, I just, I think this is magic in your leadership here and the accountability that you create because really all you're doing is cheering them on to hit their own goals and helping them uncover those challenges and they know oh all right mark is alongside me as my partner to get there and as a um you know a kind of a an executive role in in yeah. running that that business instead of being an owner operator an owner operator you're like setting the goals chasing the goal trying to problem solve things like that where yeah yeah. You know, your cool. your sole focus is to help this business grow by helping these people be better. And that's That is, yeah. That's the number one thing people want in a culture of a business. And I want to get into that word with you. Yeah. The number one thing they want in a culture of a business is a business that helps them get better. So help me understand, how do you build this culture? Because you've done a fantastic job of it and you're growing and your franchisees are happy. So yeah, where did you come from with this culture and, and help us understand that? Yeah. And that's, um, I think as far as culture, you know, you see it a lot on, on, um, TikTok and I think, uh, Gary V is a really good, somebody who drives and there's a lot of the, those, um, influence. I think it just comes from just being on and maybe it's the way it was raised or maybe, you know what I mean? It's like, it's being honest and being real. And like, I'm a, I have five little girls. So I, God love you, man. To, <laughs> yeah, it's a whole different podcast, That's a whole different, but that's, um, I don't have time to, um, you know, it's just being, it's just being cool. How do you build? You got to know the person you have to understand. Like I, like through the whole onboarding, this thing is by the end of it, Adam, we're, yes, it's business, it's, but we're going to be married for 10 years. Like it's a 10 year term, the franchise, right? So I got to make sure I love you, man. And you got to love me. So we'll have a lot of these conversations. Where we get nothing done. You know, we'll, we'll grab a coffee and we'll just talk, right? So it's getting to know them. What are your goals? What do you want? What's your background? What's your family? Like what's, you know, what's a pain point in your life? And even what part of our onboarding process, our business ramp up, you know, it's, one is the personal page is what is good for Adam? What do you want? What do you want to get out of this? Well, I want to make a 200K a year and I want a boat. I want a vacation. I want this. Awesome. So let's talk. So I think that builds culture just organically. Is I don't think you can, um, I don't think you can just say, I'm going to have a business, going to have a great culture because everyone's going to be wearing bright clothes and we're going to drive funky car. Like that's, you know <laughs> right. what I mean? It's like, I got to know. And, and sometimes it's just saying, if somebody's having a bad month or, you know, the numbers are down, it's just saying, hey, man, what's shaking? Like, what's going, you know, it's like, oh, I mean, totally. And so I think that just builds, I think just being real, man, it's just, you know, there's no, and that helps if you look on the flip side, that's what allows us to grow. So like 17 is, we were shooting for year one was five to seven, right? So we crushed that. But I think it's when they talk to our franchise partners, they ask them those questions. Yes, everybody's happy. Everybody's making money, but it's that culture. It's like, you know, you can, these guys develop their own pocket, their own pools of, of um, teams, you could say, right? Which is, I love that part. That's my favorite is when you start to see it grow and it's like your baby's growing, right? And they start to, um, they start to develop these, 
oh, we're going to hit a game or, oh, we're going to go watch this, or, you know, the Ontario guys or the Florida, they all kind of hook up together. So I think that that's kind of what builds culture. And I, I think that just comes from not the franchisor, it's it's the system. As long as everybody's, you know, we do these weekly huddles, but we also do a monthly round table, which yeah. is we meet once a month and it's more general, right? So when you get in these and you see when you have 10 or 15 minutes of the thing is, it's not even talking business. It's them talking about, oh, our ball team beat your, our hockey team, and bugging, you know, kind of <laughs> teasing each other. But that's that's culture. So that that's what I think. So yeah, you you want to have some good talk with our Canadian friends. Talk talk about hockey. I mean, that's, it's, it's kind of, that's right. Yeah, it, that can also go either way. You could piss them off, or you could, yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. So I mean, I it, it's such a great culture and so much fun. Um, but. Yeah. Let's let's kind of flip the paradigm here a little bit. We've heard you're a fan of tough love and grabbing life by the cannonballs. Yes. Tell tell me about that. What is what does that mean? Because I mean, you know, life is not always just fantastic, oh. and everybody's doing what they need to do. How do you address that? I so grab. I would say you know, grab life by the cannonballs. This just comes into with puddle. You know, that, obviously that worked out well. Uh, tough love <laughs> right. is. I get. I guess that's the way I was raised to or just my outlook on life is nobody's going to give you anything if you want it you have to work for it you got to go get it this is not there's no hand nobody owes you jack nobody owes you nothing if you want to get it you get it right so i'm also a firm believer in if you think of it will happen or you want to get that goal write it down work towards that goal it will happen you will get there it's just how you get and there'll be ups and downs and you know it's not all it's it's not all hunky dory you gotta be you gotta have the 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 cannonballs to work through those because there will be in businesses this isn't always it's not always up 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 right if it was everybody would do it right there's ups and downs and this is probably the biggest space with franchising ups and downs and ups and downs so i would say it's the tough love is yeah it's yes cry about it you get one day to soak it something didn't work this is your day soak it in move on that's it so awesome it yeah yeah that's that's fantastic uh give me a key tip for small business leaders you know, a lot of people sit there and they're like, all right, I don't want to, I don't want to work for corporate anymore. I want to yeah. go out on my own. Obviously franchising is designs where you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So you have somebody, you know, like yourself, Support. who's built a system and is guiding them through that, but they get, yes. they, they get to be their own business owner. Um, yeah. Give me a key tip that helps yes. small business owners succeed. Oh, I don't that's a good one. Um, I would say my tip for is number one. This is a two. I'll give you a two tipper. Okay. Okay. So perfect. Number one, a dual tip. Um, so number one is go try it just because you don't want to be, what is the, somebody said it to me when I was, it was actually my father-in-law when I first started going to business, Ron, he's a super smart guy. He said, and I might've had like two or three kids at the time. And my wife is like, Oh my gosh, what are we doing? You're going to go on your own is, just do it. What's the worst that could happen? The worst thing that could happen is your it fails, you lose some money, and then you're back to square one. But you don't want to be 95 kicking yourself. And I think everybody knows the saying, oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Just do it. If it's in you, if people watching this are already, they have that drive in them, right? Not just the puddle might not be their gig, right? But whatever that gig is, just try it, you know? And second is do not listen to the naysayers don't listen there's a lot of people that tell you not what not to do right listen to people that are in the space where you want to be so if i want to be like if i want to know anything about remax or real estate i'm going to listen to adam you know i'm going to listen to i'm not going to listen to bob the mechanic that hates real estate he doesn't know anything you know so i'm going to listen to the pros and listen to really really take the time and listen to them because they've been through it and if you can get that five minutes with them shut your mouth and open your ears so I love answer. that. I yeah. love that. Mark yeah. Amory, Puddle Pool Services. Where can we find you guys online? Where can we find information about your franchise yeah. opportunities? Sure. Yes, yeah, so our website's uh, puddlepools.com. And there's a franchise section in there, lots of movies, clips, and somebody can take you through. If you're just interested at all, it, you know, the first call is, is nothing. You just see if it, it floats your boat. It might be your thing. You don't have to like pools. You got to like business. That's the thing. So <laughs> I love that. You don't have to like pools. You got to like business. You know, it's That's fascinating. It. Yeah. Um, you, you say that I, I have a friend who he was a, a business school professor and now he has a company that cleans trash cans. And I'm like, you like cleaning trash cans? You know, he pulls a trailer around and it cleans a trash yeah. can in front of your house. Great yeah. business. He goes, it's a business. It's not trash cans. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. He goes, totally, it, yeah. 
So, um, you know, fascinating concept. Neat. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's another, one, right? totally. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah. I, yesterday all the trash bins were out in my neighborhood and he's out yeah. cleaning them. So it was, it was great. Great Killing way to it. make business. So, um, awesome. Mark Emery, CEO of Puddle Pool Services. I mean, you've run so many different companies. Um, you <laughs> have got to hit the ground running every day or at least be super focused and, and directed yes. towards creating results. I have a question that I ask all of our amazing guests on this show, and we'd love to hear oh, your yeah. answer also. How do you start your day with a win? Make your bed. Ooh, I like that. Make your bed. That's your routine. Get up, make your bed, put some mindset, clean, fresh, everything's... That, that's just my way. I get up, make the, even a hotel room, get up, make the bed, move on. Have a coffee, <laughs> enjoy. Don't touch awesome. your phone for an hour. But make your bed. That's That would be my one tip. Make your bed, that's folks. Amazing. I, I mean, that's fantastic. I, I get up and I do that every single yeah. morning. And you look at it. You just take this moment and you look at it and you go, all right, check. Win for the day already. That's and it. I'm going to kill it. That's it. Momentum. That Mo mindset. Momentum, baby. Right mindset. Mark Amory, multiple company CEO, founder. I mean, this guy is killing it. He's not stopping. He's continuing to grow these businesses. Make sure you check out his website. And Mark, thank you again for being on Start Thanks, with yeah. a Win. Yeah, that was great. Thanks for having me, Adam.